In the modern world, it can feel as though we're all hurtling through life at breakneck speed, never quite sure of what will happen next. However, there are also those who claim to foresee exactly what's coming. The making of predictions is universally human. We all want to feel as though we have at least a little control over what's lurking on the horizon. But as history shows, a select few of us are apparently better at it than others. This is Unveiled, and today we're taking a closer look at four ancient predictions that came true. Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. Throughout history, humankind has continually looked ahead of itself. We've forever peered further along in our timeline, trying to make sense of what's hiding in our future. It's a tricky skill to master, and if there is a science to it, then it's usually the case that not everyone's convinced. Apparent prophets and supposed future tellers have almost always been met with skepticism, and often with good reason. But that said, there are still some instances that stand out as having been remarkably accurate, as having come extremely close to the truth that actually unfolded. Arguably the greatest and most infamous fortune teller of ancient times was the Oracle of Delphi. A key figure in classical Greek legend and history, it's said that she was able to in some way channel spiritual forces between the material and immaterial realms, often to inform Greek leaders, warriors, politicians, anyone who came to seek her counsel. Interestingly, it's said that she may have attained her powers through inhaling a particular and unknown gas, but one that some researchers now believe may have been naturally released via geological vents in the grounds of her temple. But however she did it, the oracle occasionally delivered some cutting and irrefutable foreknowledge. Perhaps most notably, it was she who first foretold the fate of Croesus, the famously wealthy one-time ruler of the kingdom of Lydia. It was said that a message from the oracle was delivered to Croesus in or around the year 547 BCE. In short, she advised him that if he crossed the Halys River, if he went to war with Persia, then a great empire would be destroyed. Fueled by confidence and legendary riches, Croesus continued his advance, apparently sure that the only lost empire would be the one that he was going to war with. However, as history shows, he would ultimately bear witness to the obliteration of his own empire, as he lost out to the Persian king Cyrus the Great. Although the oracle's cryptic warning was somewhat open to interpretation, there's little denying that they did at least get it right. So what do you think? Was this a genuine piece of divine inspiration, or more a clever play of words and misdirection? Regardless, the fall of Croesus became a cautionary tale in the centuries that followed, echoing through the corridors of time and underlining just how important words from the oracle could be. There's perhaps only one figure in history who can rival the oracle when it comes to high-profile prophecy, the 16th century French astrologer Michel de Nostradame, otherwise known as Nostradamus. This legendary seeming seer left behind a trail of cryptic verses that purportedly foretold all manner of future events, including, among others, the French Revolution and the rise of Adolf Hitler. In the case of the French Revolution, advocates point to various phrases that Nostradamus penned, such as references to revolutionary brothers and to situations raised by the rebellious. Slightly more specifically, Nostradamus once wrote of the enslaved held captive by the nobles in their prisons, which many interpret as predicting the eventual storming of the Bastille in 1789. In the case of Hitler, Nostradamus wrote verses referring to a child in Western Europe being born to poor parents, as Hitler was, who would go on to gain a huge following. Meanwhile, he also wrote of ferocious beasts in the same region, of battlefields, and of a cage of iron. For some, the combined writings of Nostradamus amounts to a prediction of the rise of the Nazis. On the other hand, critics argue that whatever Nostradamus had to say was sufficiently vague to accommodate numerous interpretations. And while he's remembered for knowing the future, perhaps his powers were never quite so set in stone. We're heading a few centuries further back in time, though, for our next claimed fortune teller, whose predictions were so extensive that we're still currently in the midst of them. In the 12th century, Saint Malachi, Archbishop of Armagh, was said to have received a series of visions depicting the future of the Catholic Church. The details have since been preserved. In particular, 
via a list of 112 Latin phrases attributed to Malachy that are said to forecast the line of future popes. In other words, St. Malachy's visions can seemingly be consulted and have been analyzed for hundreds of years because they tell all about every Catholic leader. The prophecy of popes, as it's commonly known, unfolds with eerily accurate descriptions of pontiffs leading up to the present day, referring to aspects of their rule, key historical events, or specific individual challenges. What's especially concerning, however, for those that subscribe to its accuracy, is that the prophecy is now seemingly close to its end. By some readings, it could even be that the next pope will be the last pope before the apocalypse arrives on Earth. As with the Oracle and Nostradamus, however, the seeming accuracy of the prophecy of the popes has been called into question. The main criticism against it is that, while the record is deemed extremely accurate up to around the late 1500s, after then, its effectiveness appears to fall away, and potentially with very good reason, as it was in 1595 when the prophecy was first published by the Benedictine monk Arnold Wyan. The allegation is, then, that it should serve more as a historical record until that point, and pure speculation afterwards. But what do you think? Finally, and as if the fall of empires, the rage of war, or the supposed divinity of papal ascendancy weren't enough, then how about modern technology? Now, in this case, the number of attempted predictions from the past is through the roof. It's a feature of humanity that we can see working in the here and now as well, given the continual stream of future predictions that we ourselves make for the coming years. That said, there are again some who come far closer to the truth, far more often. Francis Bacon was one such figure, operating at the height of the Renaissance period in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. While never revered as a prophet in quite the same way as Nostradamus was, many of Bacon's seeming predictions trace back to an unfinished novel of his, New Atlantis. It's a cautionary tale borrowing heavily from the long-told Legend of Atlantis, complete with the moral warning that greed and arrogance could ultimately lead to destruction. But the details of Bacon's vision are especially of interest. In the text, he refers to ways of imitating the flights of birds and to ships that can travel underwater seemingly imagining the planes and submarines of today. There's also an apparent importance on engine houses, which could double up as the factories that would go on to power the Industrial Revolution. In general, Bacon was outlining his idea of a better world shaped by science. This is what his New Atlantis amounts to. And so, somewhat unsurprisingly, Bacon's supporters now believe that he was in fact simply way ahead of his time, and that his writings really did foretell what was to come. So what's your verdict on the Oracle of Delphi, Nostradamus, St. Malachy, and Francis Bacon? All of them were clearly interested in peering into the future. All of them shared in abundance that oh-so-human trait of wanting to know what comes next. And all of them reportedly divulged what would go on to become some vital information. These figures of times gone by offer a glimpse into a certain branch of mysticality that has captured human imagination for centuries. And whether born of divine insight, poetic ambiguity, or sheer coincidence, their prophecies continue to spark curiosity and debate. Suspicion and skepticism are never far away, and perhaps with good reason. But nevertheless, those are four ancient predictions that came true. Most of the myths and legends of India are derived from ancient religious texts. They've been passed down through the ages, enthralling generations of readers and listeners. But over the years, they've also been interpreted as portals and doorways giving insight into the future of humanity. This is Unveiled, and today we are exploring four bizarre predictions from ancient Indian texts. Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more fascinating content? We'll start on a somewhat pessimistic note. A key concept for today's video is that in Hinduism, time is cyclical. Each cycle lasts 4,320,000 years and is comprised of four great seasons or yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. According to various ancient texts, we're now in the last of those, the Kali Yuga. It's generally described as being 432,000 years long and is said to have begun in the year 3102 BC, at the climax of an epic war, the Kurukshetra War. 
So while we're already some 5,000 years through this final season, there are still 426,000 years left for it to run. But the bad news is that the world of the Kali Yuga isn't a good one. And our first bizarre prediction for the future of humanity is, well, that we've only just begun an age of unrelenting darkness, misery, and vice. With each yuga, humanity's moral and physical well-being deteriorates, which means that the Kali Yuga is the summit of our deterioration, the pinnacle of all of our problems. And unfortunately, it's been invariably highlighted how we can seemingly see signs of the Kali Yuga all around us today. In this most unfortunate of seasons, humanity's spiritual purpose is said to have diminished. Wealth becomes the key metric, but it's often guided by deceit and corruption. Law and order are then guided by wealth, while the collection of taxes hangs heavy over a busy, bustling society. These conditions are then worsened by things like war, conflict, famine, drought, harsh weather, and disease, leading to more and more suffering. As part of the Kali Yoga, it's the most corrupt who rise to political power, and they use that power to control everyone else. For those more inclined with a cynical worldview, then the most bizarre aspect to these predictions might only be how close to real life they appear to fall. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. That's because today's second bizarre prediction for the future is World War III. Thankfully, the Kali Yuga story concludes with the eventual arrival of a messianic figure known as Kalki. At the latest, this should happen around the year 428,899, but some say it could happen before then. It's said that Kalki, the tenth and last incarnation of the god Vishnu, will one day bring the cycle of yugas to an end, refresh the seasons, and move us back to the first yuga, the Satya Yuga, which should be a golden age. It's just that between now and then, it's predicted that rampant corruption, poverty, greed, hatred, and intolerance will have utterly deprived humanity of its soul, and World War III could be the endgame for all of those issues. While the Great Kalki's arrival does have the upside of bringing this nightmarish time to an end, it's also said that it will happen only following a great war. A war vast and devastating enough that it will leave the world in total ruin. And today, most onlookers agree that World War III will do exactly that. Most texts stop short of going into great detail about what the war could look like, and most don't suggest that it's coming tomorrow, but it is coming. And when it happens, humanity will have perhaps reached its lowest ebb. Of course, we know that human history is already strife with war, conflict, and suffering. But we also know that, somewhat ironically, some wars have served as a means toward technological advancement as well. And in Hindu mythology, wars have often been portrayed in this way, wherein they too feature the use of imaginative machines and contraptions. One such machine, the Vimana, particularly stands out as it appears to be a prediction. Today's third prediction toward modern-day spaceflight and propulsion technology. The ancient Vimanas were machines piloted by the gods. They came in all shapes and sizes and were multi-use, made for land and sea as well as for space travel. References to them have been found in many ancient texts, including the Hindu epic Mahabharata, and another more contemporary text, the Vaimanaka Shastra. One particular passage in the Mahabharata, for example, provides a description of the Vimana that's reminiscent of jet propulsion, referring to them, quote, radiating light and carrying a, quote, deep rumbling sound. The Vimanaka Shastra also includes similar references, indicating, for instance, that the Vimana propulsion was enabled by the use of rotating gyroscopes of electricity and mercury in what's essentially a vortex engine. Importantly, the Vimanaka Shastra was penned less than 100 years ago, so it can by no means be considered an ancient text. Plus, a 1974 study of it carried out by the Indian Institute of Science found that the crafts detailed within it were unfeasible and were much more closer to fictional steampunk flying machines than real life. Nevertheless, this hasn't stopped theorists from listing it as the last in a long line of works that seemingly preempt the engines, systems, and machines developed by the likes of NASA ever since the 1950s. But finally, Hindu scriptures touch on many more cosmological concepts too, not just space travel. The legend of Revati, found in the Vishnu Purana text, for example, provides the basis for today's fourth bizarre prediction, that humanity and the world is shaped by time dilation. It's estimated that the Vishnu Purana was composed between 1,100 and 2,200 years ago, and yet it includes within it a mode of thought more in tune with Albert Einstein and 20th century science. 
In the story, Revati is the daughter of King Kakudmi, a descendant of the sun god Surya. Believing that no human is worthy enough to marry his daughter, Kakudmi takes Revati to seek counsel with the god Brahma the Creator. When they arrive at Brahma's abode, they wait a short time while the god watches a musical performance. Then, when they explain the situation to him, and when Kakudmi requests that a suitable partner be found for his daughter while presenting a short list of candidates, Brahma laughs. He explains that time isn't the same across different levels of existence. So, within the short time that Kakudmi and Revati had awaited his counsel, 108 yugas, that's more than 100 million years, had passed on Earth. Which means that every suitor on Kakudmi's shortlist will have died long ago, as well as all of his and Revati's friends, family, and everyone they'd ever known. Returning to Earth, Kakudmi and Revati marveled at the incredible changes that have taken place on their home planet during what had seemed a brief visit to Brahma. And again they bear witness to the shocking extent of humanity's regression, having been away from it for so long. But regardless of how humanity may have fared, the central concept here is literally millennia ahead of its time. Time dilation is a relatively modern school of scientific thought, but the ancient scholars appear to have predicted its nature within this story. Now we see it as a basis for scientific experiment and science fiction. With various movies featuring characters who age differently to everyone else because of the physical journeys they take through space and reality. But really, Revati was the first to take that trip. Such is the rich and huge history and tradition that the ancient texts cover. It would be impossible to summarize all of them within one video. But we can see in just these four cases that the earliest works at times provided a window into the future. And part of that future is what we're living in today. The nods towards space travel and flying machines certainly fit. The discussion around time and the true nature of reality still feels very modern. It remains to be seen whether World War III will take hold, and perhaps it's an issue of contention as to whether all the worst parts of the Kali Yuga really are taking place today. But for now, those are four bizarre predictions from ancient Indian texts. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.